Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this virtual IoT meetup. I'm Frédéric Devien, the Program Manager at the Eclipse Foundation for IoT and Edge Computing. And today we have a fantastic presentation, one of my favorites from uh, EclipseCon Europe 2019. So I have the pleasure to have with me uh, Bob Clara from Alexi. So Bob, uh, up to you. Okay, thanks for the introduction, Frédéric. Um, glad to have the, this present to make this presentation again. Uh, so let's get started right ahead. So uh, I will pres we'll be presenting um, yeah, the what the title says, a flexible and scalable industrial IoT platform using Eclipse IoT projects. And let's get started right ahead. Um, as Frederick said, my name is Bob Cloudhout. I'm a Master of Science in the Applied Engineering Electronics ICT since 2011. And I work for Alexi since October uh, 2018, which is uh, roughly a year right now. And I'm, the, I'm a backend developer in the uh, Alexi team. Um, it was my first time professional use of Java, containers, Kubernetes, OpenShift. So it is all a new experience for me. So for everyone who is starting with it, uh, I have um, yeah, created the, the same track as you, I've, I've done the tr same track as you guys did. And um, I, um, yeah, I'm just here to tell my experience of the, over the last year. Then a little bit about Aloxi as well. Uh, we are the yellow company on the IoT Eclipse uh, adopters page. Uh, you see us there over there three times. We are using Eclipse Tito, we are using Eclipse Hono and Eclipse Porto. And uh, last time I showed the slide as well on the EclipseCon, and the slide was a lot uh, smaller. There were a lot less companies on it, and it's growing, so that's a good sign. Um, and we are, yeah, we're progressing. Eclipse IoT is progressing as well, which is nice. Aloxi itself is founded in 2017. We were a spin off of the iMake and the University of Antwerp. University of Antwerp is still a close partner um, in, in, uh, for the wireless communication, and we are headquartered in Antwerp in Belgium. Uh, Aloxi is um, mostly focused on creating a vertical solution rather than a generic solution, which means that we are focused on the wireless communication. So right now, I'm the only one, I'm the only backend developers, uh, but uh, we will be with three backend developers uh, by the start of January. But there are three or four um, embedded developers which are specialized in low powers wireless communication. And thus, Aloxi is an active member of the Dash 7 Alliance and the LoRa Alliance. Dash 7 Alliance is just a competitor of LoRa, um, but we uh, um, focus on both of them and we, are, uh, we support both of them. In 2018, we raised $2 million and we are working with companies such as Dow, BSF, NG Fabricom, and so on. And uh, most important part of this, especially for this talk, is that we are a proud contributor of, on Eclipse Hono and Eclipse Ditto, but later on I will tell you more about this. Then we are a little bit more about the Alexi Pulse. The Alexi Pulse is the sensor we use to um, solve the vertical problem. Um, we are trying, to, we are solving this problem using this pulse and it has um, several sensors, including the temperature, mechanism, vibration, orientation, for example. And it has some uh, two buttons and it has two LEDs. So uh, we can uh, give feedback to the um, user of the sensor. Um, the sensor also supports multiple te technologies, including LoRa, Sigfox, Dash 7, and RFID, uh, which is useful uh, for several use cases. Then the vertical solution we are trying to solve uh, using the Alexi Pulse sensor right now is um, the manual valve position indication. Um, it is um, trying to um, determine the angle of the uh, manual valve um, just by using this wireless sensor. This makes sure that our customers um, know the position of the valve and know how much uh, percentage, what the open percentage value of it is, uh, without having to lay down uh, a wired installation to the to the sensor or to the valve itself. That's just one vertical solution. Uh, the other solutions uh, we are try we will be um, tackling are uh, laid down here. Um, so the manual valve position is um, on top of uh, top on top of the le left, and then the other solution we are um, actually um, solving as well right now uh, is the maintenance process monitoring. This is um, a localization uh, system which is. Um, uh, a localization system for the valves or for any, any other components during shutdown. Uh, so during a shutdown, the whole complete uh, plant is uh, broken down into a lot of different pieces. These pieces are sent to for maintenance and clearing, 
um, and they want to keep track of the, these uh, sensors and these uh, valves uh, so they are back in time. Um, and this is uh, the, the follow up of these sensors is really important. And that's what we can achieve as well uh, with the wireless communication and the wireless sensor using the pulse. And then these other use cases of vibration monitoring, for example, or external sensors or tracking blinds uh, are uh, solutions and use cases we will be tackling later on, uh, but are also possible for the using the uh, Alexi pulse. And then an important one on this slide is the IoT platform for a customer. Uh, we want to we want to tackle and support multiple use cases which we do not think of right now um, we are just uh, yeah using and uh, tailoring towards the chemical industry but if someone else wants to use our iot platform we want to make sure that it's working and that we they can use it so that's uh, the way we will be developing our iot platform will be that it is a generic platform which um, can support any use case then let's dive into the IT platform itself. Uh, the IT platform currently, uh, let's have a first uh, have a high-level overview. Um, so at the left-hand side, you see the Alexi Pulse. It can communicate via LoRa 1 or Dash 7 to our own gateways. You see it in the, at the top, uh, you're in a private network. Or it can communicate uh, using a public network, public LoRa 1 server or a public Sigfox server. Both of the gateways uh, or the network server will communicate to the Alexi IoT platform. And then the Alexi IT platform in itself can communicate the calculated values and calculations back to the customer um, and or uh, Alexi applications itself. What are the most important requirements for our platform? Uh, most of our customers require an on-premise installation. Uh, we try to avoid it as much as possible, but in the chemical industry, in oil and gas, for example, um, it's question number one, uh, is it possible to run on-premise? Can we just achieve this without using the cloud? Uh, because we want uh, we want our data to, get, to be on the site, to be on premise, and not leave uh, yeah leave there the site. Uh, so it's very important for us. Then, if uh, a customer um, does not want to have it on premise, it's uh, possible that, for example, they have their own cloud, they have their own cloud, private cloud. So we have to make sure that the Alexi IoT platform is multi-cloud and or multi-tenant in a multi-instance. So that uh, covers the whole um, tar deployment target uh, spectrum, which is possible. Then besides that, and that's the reason why we are on Eclipse IoT, is that we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want it to be based on open standards and open source when possible, which is, uh, as later on uh, I will be telling, is possible and is uh, highly achievable. We want it to be horizontal scalable and full tolerant, which is um, also possible and is uh, done by using the cluster. We want it to be extensible so customers can uh, deploy and uh, have their own use cases. And we want to have an open gateway, gateway device API and an open application API. So in, during these slides, um, there's a lot of open in it. Uh, that's where we want to go. We want to have open stores, open standards, and open gateway and open APIs, which is very important for the customer to have long time support. In order to accomplish this, uh, we made a comparison of all um, available IoT platforms uh, in 2018. Uh, so this uh, slide is a bit dated, but that's when we decided to uh, go for Eclipse IoT. So yeah, we didn't compare them anymore later on. A lot of uh, these IoT platforms are not mentioned here, uh, but a, a lot of them uh, were falling off the list because of the on-premise requirement. Uh, so, for example, Siemens and uh, a lot of managed cloud providers, IoT, cloud provider IoT platforms are not listed here and uh, yeah, just drop off the list because of the on-premise um, requirement. And then uh, Siemens does not have a community, uh, sorry, uh, Siemens Things Board and Mainflux do not have uh, community support and uh, are lacking maturity and of the shelf capabilities. So that's the reason why we came for, we uh, chose Eclipse IoT to uh, develop our IoT platform. Let's dive into the specifics of the IT platform itself. Um, so the previous situation before I started working at Aloxi was uh, this. We have an uh, Aloxi backend, uh, which is written in uh, Python. 
uh, and we have an MQTT broker uh, next to it, which uh, was um, connected to directly uh, from the device. So there was no security. Uh, well, there was security, but the MQTT security. And now the data was stored in the MongoDB um, database and InfluxDB database. So that the InfluxDB is for the time series, and MongoDB is just for um, real life data. And then afterwards, the data was also transferred to the customer, um, for example, for a Modbus or a DCS integration. All this was running on Docker, and everything was working fine. Um, the customers were happy, the POCs went well, um, the data was flowing through, and the team could focus on the wireless commu communication or the embedded uh, side of the everything, and the backend was serving its needs, but um, as you can tell, it needed uh, some revamp and it needed an upgrade um, uh, for at least uh, security, for example, scalability, and all those things I mentioned before uh, for the requirements. So we changed this situation into this. And you see that Hono, Eclipse Hono is coming into the picture, Eclipse Ditto is coming into the picture, Keycloak as well, uh, which is used for single sign-on. And then Aloxy um, backend is uh, shifted as well. Uh, we are changing it to Java. And the MVPI application is talking to a timescale instead of influx. Uh, Ditto is used as um, the active digital twin uh, for the data. And then Ditto is also used as a communication, open API communication uh, port to for MQP, WebSockets MQTT to the customer. So the customer can make its own integration based on the open standards uh, in the open source uh, project. We are hosting on uh, OpenShift right now at least the uh, uh, open source version as well, so if OKD. And on mass is the messaging layer in between all services, uh, which is um, yeah, routing all the messages. Then we want to evolve towards this situation. So um, the normalizer is uh, coming in between Hono and Ditto. Um, this is done because uh, we want every, uh, we want to support third party sensors as well. And these third party sensors um, should be normalized towards um, Ditto so that the end application at the customer site receives all data uh, formatted the same way. So, for example, our Aloxy Pulse sensor measures its temperature. If a customer has another temperature, um, the sensor that um, is sends the data uh, over, for example, the LoRa One uh, public network, we can receive this data and present it to the customer end application. Uh, just the way uh, the temperature is delivered as from the Alexi poles. This is done using Vortal. And then uh, next to that, we want to deliver also a time series API, which um, is communicating and talking to time scale uh, and generates as well an, uh, an open API uh, for our customers. Um, for the ones who are not aware of all these projects or do not know them, I will give you a brief overview of every project and what we've done so far um, in this project and our, what our um, experiences are in, within this project. So I will start with HOMO. HOMO is a device connectivity API. So um, that means that every device in our application is connecting to HOMO. Uh, whether it be via our gateway as, or, or not. Um, so for example, our gateways, our private gateways are communicating, communicating with HONO and the public network service is also communicating with HONO. That means that um, everything else behind HONO does not care how this message is uh, received. So it does not care whether it's via LoRa, via, via Dash 7, via a public network, a private network, we do not care. HONO takes care of that, takes care of the security, takes care of the TLS and we can just uh, consume the message later on in the backend uh, as if it's from one source. It is also possible to uh, provide up and down links. So not only receiving messages, but also sending command and control. Uh, so that means you can communicate back to your device if possible, if requested. And um, it is also able to support multiple um, uh, network protocols. So for example, we use most of the time MPTT, but the LoRa network server is using HTTP and HOLO is taking care of that as well. As I said before, the security and authentication, it is able to um, be multi-tenant uh, yeah, for one single instance. It is horizontal scalable and customers can integrate their own devices. So for example, we have an open API again, uh, which is um, 
just there for the customers to um, implement their own implementation of this um, open API calls stack. And then uh, we can just receive messages from this as well. Uh, and last month, they had a first, uh, first version release. So uh, version 1.0 O is released, and uh, if I'm correct, in the coming weeks, uh, version 001, uh, 110 will be released as well. So there, there's a lot of uh, development going on. The, most of the development is done by Bosch and Red Hat. Uh, those are the most active contributors, and they are bi-weekly community calls. If you want to contribute and join this uh, um, community, I highly recommend it. We have uh, good progress, and uh, we have nice uh, experience with it. There are a lot of contributions, and uh, even more when they were working to uh, 100. Uh, it's very mature, um, and you will always receive a fast jitter, stack overflow, and GitHub response. And they are willing to contribute from downstream. For example, the LoRaWAN adapter was uh, contributed upon our um, request, and uh, we contributed to the LoRa adapter as well afterwards in order to make it better and to add other uh, providers, for example. We did some small contributions, and we also had a face-to-face -face in Berlin in May uh, 2019, which is nice. You get to know the people, and you can uh, get to know the face behind um, yeah, the jitter and the uh, GitHub communication channels. Then the next uh, platform or the next to topic I want to discuss is Dito. Dito is a digital twin to mirror the state of the physical assets. We use it to um, make sure uh, to track our um, digital, to track the devices uh, and get the actual live data out of it. And also we use it to um, make sure our customers can use the open API to interact with the digital twin. So customers uh, are receiving updates, customers are um, through MQTT or WebSockets, for example, but will have the ability to also uh, update their own uh, digital twin uh, with uh, metadata, for example. And it is also used by our Aloxy Pulse um, MVPI uh, application. So that means that we have an IoT, a generic IoT platform, and the Aloxy Pulse MVPI application is also some sort of a customer from the generic uh, IoT platform. Bosch is the most active contributor here. Uh, there is no community call yet, uh, but I mentioned this yet, this on uh, EclipseCon as well and they uh, took it to heart and they uh, are arranging in a, a community call next week starting next week so feel free to join if you uh, are interested in this project as well there are a lot of contributions it's becoming mature more and more mature and they are working right now towards version 100 as well and you also receive um, fast jitter stack overflow and github responses and we managed to get some uh, small contributions but not as much as on hono as you can see next uh, package or uh, IoT project is the Eclipse Forto project. This Forto project is um, used to normalize every data. So um, it generates, it has a list of um, capabilities for a, a specific device. This device, for example, is uh, uh, written, is described in this model. Uh, for example, for the Aloxy Pulse, we have a temperature sensor, we have an um, open percentage, um, we have uh, a pressure, for example, and this is reusing the already existing um, descriptions in the Vorto, which results, as I just said before, in uh, the same um, sort of data for each device separately. So that means that, for example, a third-party sensor will have the same um structure of data for sense for temperature as the aloxy pulse which is easy for customers to integrate on that then we also have of course a porto model for the aloxy pulse as well and we have uh, a vorto is uh, has the ability to generate code based on the vorto model as well we do not have any um, contributions to this, and there is no community call as well. Uh, but we are in contact since EclipseCon with uh, the Bosch um, people behind Vorto, and maybe there is this something coming up. Uh, we will have a call last, uh, next Friday in order to see what uh, what's possible and uh, see how the project can continue on this. So that's very good response based on EclipseCon as well. Um, Bosch is the most act uh, active contributor. And they are reachable via Jitter, Stack Overflow, and GitHub. Um, but yeah, we'll see how this changes because the 
project is, is changing a lot, I think, uh, and will be changing a lot in the, during the next few weeks. Then uh, all the way in the bottom on the left, uh, we have on mass, which is not an IoT Eclipse IoT project, but I think it's worth mentioning because we use it uh, internally for our communication. It's using it's an MQP. We use it as an MQP uh, one O broker. Uh, it's all the messaging and queuing and um, topic filtering is done by this, and it's uh, also multi-tenant, which supports MQP and MQTT if you like it. Uh, there is an um, an online version as well from Red Hat. And uh, it supports authorization, uh, pub sub request response, and it's used, of course, uh, for the messaging all over our backend service. Red Hat is the most active contributor. There is no community call, uh, but I think it's mainly uh, Red Hat who is involved. Uh, I think there are not, not a lot uh, of other uh, participants in this. However, it's fast paced, uh, so people are really dedicated in MS. Um, for on this in uh, Red Hat on this, and they are reachable via mailing list and IRC. It would be nice if there was a Jitter channel as well, uh, but for now that is not there, and we do not have any contributions right now. Then uh, the key cloak is um, the next uh, package I want to discuss. Key cloak is an identity um, platform, an identity and access management platform. Uh, it is uh, mainly used for single sign-on. And it takes care of all uh, security and management uh, of, of our users um, in our IoT application, IoT uh, backend. And um, it is able to use, for example, LDAP or uh, Active Directory as well. So um, secure our API, uh, Ditto API with it. Um, so that, yeah, Keycloak handles all security and uh, authentication. We are not following in this community. For now, it does what it's uh, what it needs to do, um, and we can just use it and do not have to, have to look at it any any further. So this was a brief discussion about the near future um, we are working towards. Uh, after the near future, we have of course uh, need to evolve as well, and we want to try and uh, make these changes. Uh, we want to shift the portal. Um, normalization up to Hono. So if it's possible, but we have to discuss this with the Hono team as well, we would like to uh, make sure that the data coming out of Hono is already normalized, which would be nice because that's an extra step, an extra microservice you would have to implement and um, support while this might be uh, in Hono as well. The LoRa1 adapter, for example, is already normalizing data. So why not normalize every uh, bit of data that comes through Hono? Uh, next to that, when we want to uh, deploy the chip stack server, this is an uh, um, open source LoRa1 um, server implementation. So we want to place it behind Hono, so that makes that allows us to um, update and uh, make sure that uh, the network is the LoRa1 network is behaving properly. Um, by doing this, then a customer does not have to um, pay or uh, investigate in in another uh, LoRa1 network server. We can just deploy the LoRa1 network servers ourselves and make sure that the network is behaving properly. After that, we want to, or next to that, to deploy and update our devices, uh, especially updated. Um, so uh, it is able to um, work out um, a deployment strategy model um, and you can uh, yeah you can define your devices and update them using hogbit and then next to that we will uh, also look into iofog but that's not sure whether we will use it or not but we will definitely look into it uh, and see what what the possibilities are the next part of our uh, of my talk will be uh, about the IoT platform deployment uh, we will be deploying uh, on Kubernetes mostly, and that means that we will have a cloud native development um, as well. So uh, we will we will be of your of course be using microservices. We will uh, deliver continuously. We will have a scalable uh, application. We will have uh, make sure that it's um, vendor neutral. We will stick to Kubernetes as much as possible. Uh, to allow customers to choose their own open source, us to choose their own cloud platform. Um, so that are the most important parts, of, the most important um, parts of this. And also, Gartner estimates that uh, a lot of companies will go cloud native. So yeah, that's just 
the mainstream we are following. Uh, and I, we see that uh, at the Eclipse IoT projects, they, those are following those rules as well. So uh, we are doing this as well. Then we use Kubernetes as an um, application runtime. So it will be our uh, deployment target. Uh, right now, we are also using uh, Red Hat uh, OpenShift, um, as I said before. And it, it is just a de facto standard. Um, we, uh, at Eclipse Holo, for example, they also had uh, made the decision to just from to just go for Kubernetes and uh, all deployment scripts are tailored towards uh, Kubernetes. Then, of course, um, we have questions with our customers um, on where to deploy uh, the Galaxy IT platform. The Galaxy IT platform can be deployed on premise and can be deployed in the cloud as well on a private cloud or can be a multi tenant cloud. And this slide um, shows us what the possibilities are and what the consequences are. So, for example, if you go on premise, then cloud but uh, there will be a lot of lot more data isolation although we can have uh, intermediate solutions as well so for example when we want to uh, anonymize the data towards the IoT platform and then you have just one uh, Microsoft service running on, on premise uh, to um, the to couple the normalized the anonymized data back to um, the files which is this is a possibility as well uh, also, the DCS integration uh, is possible using a, uh, uh, a bridge between the IoT platform in the cloud and the on-premise uh, service on site. Uh, yeah, that's about it on this um, uh, slide, I think, except maybe for the fact that we have a higher subscription cost as well uh, when it's on-premise. Uh, this cost will reduce significantly if we can uh, yeah, group these uh, subscriptions for the for example, for support uh, for OpenShift uh, on the on the cloud uh, platform instead of on-premise. So this is mainly uh, what we're aiming for. The IoT, IoT platform is uh, deployed on uh, Kubernetes, and Kubernetes can be deployed on a wide varied variance of um, uh, clouds. Uh, for example, Azure, uh, Amazon, uh, VMware, or even bare metal, if you'd like, uh, on-premise. So to come to a conclusion on this uh, slides deck and uh, on this presentation, the Alexi IoT platform wants to prevent lock-in. So uh, we want to have open APIs and have our main entry, uh, entry points to be open, uh, which are mainly Holo, Tito, and Vorto. They will want to integrate multiple networks. Um, as I discussed before, Alexi-7 and Lora one will be um, supported. They will want to normalize the sensor data to um, easily incorporate all the data and the calculations to um, customers. And they will want to have also um, a, a powerful digital twin API, which uh, serves as a device, uh, which enables devices as a service, excuse me, um, next to it. Next to that, we will we will also have to, um, the capabilities and the possibilities to have third-party LoRaWAN sensors. And we want to have, uh, that's where we want to uh, have a unique selling point, which is also an integration or at least uh, a better understanding of their wireless network. Uh, so we want to have an optimal application quality of service uh, instead of just receiving the data and uh, pushing it to the customer. We, will, we will also want to give the customer an update on how the network is performing, how the battery is performing, what the latency is, uh, and so on. And then, uh, as I said before, uh, Aloxy is mainly focused on the LoRaWAN and the, net, and the Dash 7 communication, wireless communication. Uh, so we will be tailored, always be tailored towards the battery powered devices, which need to be efficient. And then next, last but not least, we also have uh, the on-premise installation possibilities, uh, which is very important to our customers. So as you can see on the left-hand side of this slide, um, there we uh, are currently a uh, vertical, uh, Aloxia has currently uh, created a vertical solution and we want to grow towards an IoT enabler or uh, more and have more generic IoT platform, which can be used for other third-party uh, devices and uh, any use case a customer can come up with. Then what are the next steps for Aloxi um, and other projects maybe? 
Um, so Holna, we wanna, um, in, in Holna, we want to uh, implement a downlink. Um, so currently, it's not possible to send downlink messages to Holo. Uh, so that's something we want to uh, implement so that um, we have the same functionality for Dash 7 and Holo. Then we want to have uh, generic parsing on normalization, as I discussed before, using Vorto. And we want to deploy InfiniSpan, which is already in uh, Holo uh, 1.00, uh, but we did not deploy it yet. And then for Ditto, we want to have um, the current versus desired um, state. This is something uh, which can be used to send, to generate and send downlink messages. So say for, say for example, we want to have a heartbeat interval uh, for a specific sensor every 10 minutes, but right now it's one minute. Uh, you can just change it, change the property in Ditto, and after that, it will send a message to the uh, sensor saying that it only needs to send um, this, uh, this heartbeat every 10 minutes. Then for Vorto, we want to incorporate this as much as possible in Homo. And we want to uh, give the customer the ability to um, change and uh, add uh, extra sensors um, and empower the, the customer to just use it themselves. And for us uh, internally, we need also have a, need to also have a management API. And next to that, we have uh, have a, need to have a look into alerting Hogbit, uh, Eclipse, uh, IOFOG is not mentioned here, Helm deployment and operators as well. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Yes, absolutely. So if you have questions, there is a ask a question feature uh, on podcast that you can use, or you can just uh, type the questions uh, in the chat and I will read them to Bob. So uh, in the meantime, uh, I have a question. So um, it seems to me that, uh, well, you, you are still a very, very young uh, company. Uh, and uh, you are uh, targeting a very a very large market, you know. Um, so I'm I'm curious on how you made the decision to go open source when when you started the company, and and what benefits open source gave uh, to you as a company. Um, I think the solution, the 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 answer to this question is mainly um, how will customers look at us. Um, so right now. Um, our customers are looking at a small company uh, with uh, roughly eight um, employees, uh, and we we cannot. Yeah, they are requesting, for example, uh, a lot of support and a lot of um, ways how how will Oxy look like in eight years, for example, or in ten years. And the answer to these questions are insecure and are uh, not stable enough. So if we choose for open source, uh, one main advantage is that uh, everything is there. They can look into it themselves. They can, for example, go to uh, Bosch and say, yeah, Aloxy deployed here something for us. Uh, we do not understand it. Can you help us? Because Aloxy uh, uh, chose to do something else, for example. Uh, another way is that we do not, another reason is that we do not, do not have to reinvent the wheel. Um, so if uh, you would ask me one year ago, Go and develop an IoT platform. I would not be able to uh, accomplish what I did during the last year just because of the reusage we did uh, and the help we got from Red Hat from Bosch, uh, which is nice. Uh, and it's also good to know that um, the, IoT, the the open source projects are not moving by themselves. So that's uh, why I mentioned also the LoRa One adapter, uh, which was contributed from downstream from Bosch, that was uh, based on our uh, question. Uh, and yeah, they, they just contributed it. So yeah, only the question took t took me ten minutes uh, explaining what I exactly wanted, and then they contributed work from more than more than a week, two weeks, uh, which is very useful for us. Okay, that makes sense. So if I understand you well, essentially there were two reasons. First, uh, you have production quality code that you can leverage uh, very quickly and give you. Um, give you credibility with your customers. And yeah. then the second aspect is obviously, uh, it's much faster to build on an existing platform and then you build you know, things that are really specific to Aloxy uh, that nobody else can deliver. Yeah. Yeah. Our unique selling point is not the IT platform. Our unique selling point is the sensor is calculating the angle, is making sure that we provide uh, a solution, not, then, not rather an IoT platform. Mm -hmm. As a follow-up question, and 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 please attendees uh, use uh, the chat or the ask a question feature if you have questions. But 
Uh, as a follow-up, um, uh, do you see Anoxy making, uh, you are contributing right now to other projects. Uh, do you see yourselves at some point having your own projects, starting your own or, or, or things like that? Yeah, in fact, we're thinking about it. Um, and this is rather new. Um, but for example, the Dash 7 uh, stack, uh, and I'm not an expert on this, uh, but my colleagues are thinking about it and uh, looking into this, whether this might be useful or uh, interesting for uh, both us as the uh, Eclipse IoT um, community. Well, certainly I'm, <laughs> I'm certainly interested in having uh, discussions with that, yeah. especially since we are having right now discussions with, uh, with another project, uh, which is a LoRa server. So you see something emerging there that could be interesting for sure for our community. Okay. Uh, so looking forward, and, and, and by the way, uh, the, the process to start a new project is very simple. You just, you know, write a project proposal and the community give, uh, gives input during a public review process. And after that, once the public review is done and the project is approved, we just provision the GitHub and everything. And it's, it's fairly straightforward. So uh, no worries there. And I'm more than happy to help you guys uh, get this started. Yeah. At some point. We will certainly have a look at it, uh, and we are already doing it. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, fresh from the needle. Hey, fantastic. Uh, glad to see there are uh, exciting things. Uh, and, and you shared with us your, your roadmap and, and your contribution or expectations roadmap with the various uh, projects. Uh, one thing uh, I wanted to hear a bit uh, more about is how you think uh, Eclipse IO Fog could potentially play a role uh, with your stack. So for context, because I'm not sure everybody, everyone on the call is aware of this, but Eclipse IO Fog is essentially container orchestration on the edge. So you can, you can take any arbitrary container and run that on edge nodes and you wire microservices together using the platform. Um, and and uh, in their latest version, they deliver Kubernetes integration uh, by which essentially edge nodes become virtual uh, kubelets that you can deploy containers on. So it's not about having your own cluster on the edge, but rather uh, integrating edge nodes into a wider infrastructure. So where do you see uh, IOFOG fit in the type of deployments you have in mind for the future? Yeah, can you show the slides again? Because I uh, switched to another slide. Um... Uh, yes, absolutely. Let me... Uh, focus on the slides, yeah. yeah. So you see in the middle um, there where the Aluxy gateway is right now. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, They are used in a private network, uh, but right now they are uh, installed and uh, using just uh, a manual installation. So it would be nice to control these uh, gateways via an IOFOC installation, for example, uh, which we can just deploy gateways on site um, using the IOFOC uh, framework, as I just, ex just explained. Another thing that we can also do is um, if we have a component uh, which is on site, for example, to communicate with the DCS, uh, have a Modbus integration, this can also be deployed using the IOFOC uh, framework as well. So that's our things we are looking into. And currently, we do not have them uh, active yet. Uh, and it's not high on our priority list, to be honest, uh, but these are certainly possibilities. And we um, also joined the hackathon at the ClipsCon as well. And we saw the possibilities over there. Uh, and they are, yeah, we can certainly use it. And uh, we, we need, to, need to look into it. Uh, but the, the, the difficult question is when we will be doing it exactly. All right. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions from the audience. So at this point in time, uh, well, I suppose this is uh, this is over for, for the main presentation. I have uh, another uh, very, very short item before we are done, uh, which is uh, essentially uh, our uh, IoT commercial adoption survey. So, um, Year after year, since 2015, the Eclipse Foundation has been um, has been running an IoT developer survey, and now we have what we call the IoT commercial adoption survey that we are running. So this is what uh, you see on the screen. So essentially, the point of this commercial adoption survey is to understand from IoT stakeholders uh, the really? requirements. Yes. Sorry, I think the screen is not shared. Uh, we see you. The screen is not shared. Okay. 
Interesting. It's just small. On my screen, it's small. I don't know if uh, it's, I see you and not the screen. Okay. Um, let me, let me change this. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, me, me speaking is pretty much less interesting than the slide for sure. So is it better now? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Great. Hey, thank you very much. Um, so essentially, yeah, the point of the of the survey is to understand the requirements, priorities, changes for organizations that implement commercial IoT solutions. It closes on November 29th, so there are still a few days to run it. And you see a bitly uh, um, URL at the bottom of the slide that you can use uh, in order to uh, to fill the survey. So that's a bitly slash IoT adoption 2019. Uh, please do so. Um, we pretty much are interested in this uh, different take on the IoT market, and our aim is to publish the results by the end of this year or early next year uh, and share that with the community as we've been doing uh, with our IoT uh, developer surveys. Uh, by the way, our IoT developer survey will still be running uh, next year as well. So we're not dropping one to favor the other. So those two surveys will continue uh, separately from one another next year as well. Uh, so that's uh, what I wanted to share with you uh, today. And there are still no questions from the audience uh, in the chat or anywhere else. So I think uh, we are done here. Uh, thank you so much, Bob, for uh, sharing this presentation once again with us. Uh, uh, it's been a hit at uh, EclipseCon, uh, and we had a nice audience today to hear about you. And certainly, uh, uh, well, if, if attendees are curious about what Alexi is doing, they can join our uh, working group calls uh, to see uh, what's happening in the Eclipse IoT community. Yeah, of course. Well, thanks for having me, and they can always contact me and find me on the internet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the same uh, for myself. If you want to reach out and are curious about Eclipse, Eclipse IoT, or Alexi, or whatever, you can reach out to me uh, as well. So thank you so much uh, once again, Bob. And this presentation will be available on the Foundation's YouTube channel probably in a few days. Uh, so uh, check uh, and share with, uh, with your friends uh, if they missed uh, this uh, live broadcast. So once again, thank you. And uh, we'll have another uh, meetup in early December. I just confirmed the details uh, this morning. So we'll have uh, the guys from uh, Sedalo uh, talk to us about their Streamsheets platform, which is essentially a, a, a spreadsheet in the cloud with built-in IoT and QTT integration. So you can see the flows in real time, and it's really, really cool technology. So uh, normally this should be on December 5 or 6, so stay tuned for the official announcement. Thanks again for joining us this morning and uh, see you next time. Bye.